Hey, this is Alex DF, and today we're looking at day 14 of the 2016 advent of code from the 2023 revival of code one time ad. Let's take a look at the challenge. So, reading through this, another MD5 hashing um, looking for uh, duplicated characters kind of things, much like I think it was day Um So, this time, a little bit more complicated. Um, I'm going to do the same kind of thing where I get a salt, and then you know, in the example, it's ABC, my puzzle input is going to be IH, whatever. And I'm going to make ABC0, ABC1, ABC2, and I'm going to count up. And I'm looking for properties. In this case, first thing I'm looking for is a triple anywhere in it. So um, in this case, you see 888, that's a triple, perfect. Now for it to be a valid key, I have to then check the next, where is it? 1,000 hashes after that to see if that same character, in this case, the 8, is going to show up as a quint quintiplet. I don't know. It's show up as a five. So in this case, eight goes to five eighths. And so because index nineteen through one thousand eighteen don't have any hashes that have five eighths, eighteen is not a valid key. Then I get to thirty nine. Thirty nine's got three e's in it, and eight sixteen has five e's in it. So it is a valid key. Um, it says somewhere in here. Let's see. Um, it says. Uh, only consider the first triplet in a hash. So I only need to find one triplet. I don't want to find all of them. Um, and I guess that's about it. So they give me some, a lot of example data here, a lot of good, um, I'm gonna actually, I think we're gonna use a lot, I think we have a lot of little like mini steps we can use with tests. Um, so let's go ahead and try. Uh, we are going to start by running, uh, the sourcing my gen day script for day 14. Um, I'll put a link to the video where I describe exactly how this works, but it uh, gives me stubs and my puzzle input, which in this case is not super useful. Um, I'm going to start, let's see, I think the key here is going to be because of the way it's making us do the next thousand hashes each time it finds something, there's going to be a ton of repeat. And the thing I want to do is make sure I'm caching that. Um, so what we want to do here, let's see, we're not going to need, we're, we're not going to need this. We're not going to need path lib, I don't think. Um, let's go ahead and start by making ourselves a cached MD5 function. So what we're going to do, let's see, point here, import hash lib, and we can say uh, def hash md5 of uh, string. And so to get, uh, and we're just going to say pass for the moment, because we're going to write tests first, do that. Um, so we'll come down here and we will say def test cache md5. And I don't think we need any well, maybe we'll parameterize this to make it useful. So we'll leave high test dot art dot parameterize. Yeah. Okay. We're going to pass in a string and a hash. And then we're going to, ooh, don't want arg name. Uh, enter. There we go. So we'll do a couple of these like that. Um, so let's see. The first one we'll do is we'll do what are the examples they gave us? Um, ABC, they don't give us the full hashes actually, but we, we can we can generate hashes, it's not hard. So it's 18, 39, and 92, or, or no, well, 8, 16. Maybe we want to say for five E's. Okay, let's try that. So if we put in this, our hash will be, we can come down here and we can echo minus N because we don't want a new line. Paste that in and we pipe that into MD5 sum. And we get back a hash, so we can go ahead and say that. Um, we can do, we don't have much reason to doubt this, but we'll do like 39. What was the other one we were going to check? Uh, 816. Good to just make sure our hashes match up. So here is ABC 39, that, and ABC 816. So now we can come down here, we can say assert uh, AOC dot hash MD5 of string is equal to hash. So I'll just test our function is working as we expect. Uh, if we run F5 right now, um, am I in the, if we have no argument to string, uh, it doesn't take an argument, do we maybe we meant to pass one? Oh, here we need, we need str hash. Okay, perfect. 
Um, and I'm running these PyTests through um, VS Code's debugger. Um, I have a video, I'll post the link to the video here as well, how, how I set that up with the launch.json. Um, anyway, so we're getting assertion errors here where none is equal to hash, perfect. Now we can go write the function. Um, this gonna be pretty simple actually. We can do from func tools import. Uh, I'm pretty sure we're supposed to be using cache now. We'll try that. We have to switch back if it's running slow. I think, I believe the documentation says cache is the same as LRU caches, which, which is what I used to use um, with max size equal to none. So that's what I want. Um, so we'll try that. And then all we need to do is say uh, return MD5, uh, let's see, hash lib dot MD5 of string. And we're probably gonna have to encode that, I bet, because it's, it's gonna want bytes um, is equal to hash. Uh, not is equal to hash. What am I doing? It's like that. And that is going to check and see if it's equal to hash. So if we run this, let's see what we get. Um, we're still getting failed assertions here. Let's see. Um, oh, because this MD5, okay, this doesn't return an MD5. This, so now we're going to need to do that's uh, hex, hex digest. That'll give us the MD5 as a digest. Um, and we are getting different hashes interesting oh i print i put the same hash do we pass two tests and one failed okay so you can see um two one failed two passed if we come back here and look at our tests we have the same uh spring for both of those let's grab this and put this here um you can see our five e's there that's what that, that's from the example um if we run it now we are passing all of our tests so that's awesome okay we have we are happy with this function and the only reason we're making this function because it's not complicated but this cache here means when we call for the same string over and over again, we're going to get this, it's going to give us the same result instantly without having to go calculate it. So that'll be nice. Okay. Um, the next thing I need to be able to do is I'm going to, I'm just gonna make another quick function. I'm gonna call it, um, get triple. And this function is going to take a string and it's going to return to me, um, if there's a triple and what I need to know is what the character, what the triple is, right? So we'll say, um, we're gonna need re, let's port re. In fact, I'm actually gonna um, up here just to, like, just do it once. I can say uh, triple regex equals re dot compile uh, this, and the function I want is is go ahead and get that character and then two ones. So basically, it says look for any character, and then the one says find the first match, the thing in parentheses, and be be a repeat of that. So basically, if I have the same character three in a row, that's what this regex is gonna do. Uh, so now I can say uh, triple regex dot find all string. And then this is going to turn a list of the things that it found. I just want to get the first one and return. Let's try that. Come back here. We, should, ah, we, we didn't write test. We're supposed to write test first. Um, Y'all are supposed to catch me on this. So we'll do the same thing here. We'll do pytest dot mark dot parameterize. In this case, we're going to take a string and a result, I guess we'll call it. And we will go down here and make a couple of these. Um, so the first one of our string is, we don't have to actually make, we're going to be passing hashes in here, but we don't have to pass hashes, right? We can just do um, things like this. And then the result is going to be, um, I'm passing back the first one. So I'm just going to get the result is AAA. Um, and here, let's put the link that doesn't have any in it. That, comma, and this will be, ooh, we're gonna have to think about this. Um, I guess we're gonna do uh, res equals to find all if res return res sub zero. That way we don't, um, in this case, we'll have just none and then we should better, we should also test um, just to make sure if we have A, 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 B, 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 C, C, C. Because it said we only care about the first one, we want A, A, A. Okay, uh, so we'll do def, test, get triple. That's gonna take a string and res. And so we will assert um, aoc.get triple full on string equals res. Let's give that a run. It's probably going to fail. 
Okay, what do we got? A equals A. Okay. Um, oh, because only find all is not finding this whole thing. It's finding the the capture group. So actually, that's fine because we we don't need the repeated characters. We can let's in fact just update our tests on what we expect here, like this. Perfect. Okay. So now we have the ability to pass a string in and get a triple out. Uh, the next thing we need to be able to look at is how do we tell if a key is valid. Um, so let's make a function. I'm not, not going to write the test before we do it. Let's I'm gonna come here and make the function so it works. Def uh, is valid key. And for that, we're going to need to pass in like the number. So like in this case, pull up our example, we want to be able to give it like the number 18. And and I guess we need to know what the, the triple is, the eight, no, eight. And then we need to have it check all these hashes to see if we can find a quad. So we will do is valid key will take um what do we want to call this like start or um num or maybe an index, maybe idx. Um index. Now that'll be where we start. The triple will be um triple will be or maybe the car the character we'll call it star. And then we need to know we're gonna need to know the salt um still uh from this that we're using here, whatever our puzzle input is, for example. Um, I think that's good. We'll say pass here, so we get none. Um, I think that's what's going to work. Let's let's go back here, and well, now we can write the test for it. Um, def test is valid key, and for this one, I'm not going to I'm not going to bother parameterizing. We're just going to do some tests. Um, I guess we could have done it without parameterizing up here as well. Um, I wonder what the benefit of that is. Well, let's parameterize then. Because um, it gives me separate tests, and it's kind of nice um, to be able to see which one's failing more easily. Um, so we can say uh, we'll call this. Let's see. We need to think. We need to think through these examples, though. So here we're going to pass it a idx. We're going to pass it a star um, salt and res. So here our idx might we might have like index of. 18 was the first one they gave us, um, which found those eights. So we give it the eight. Um, the salt is ABC. We expect that to be false. So now we can do IDX star salt res. And here we can just say assert AOC, A, AOC dot is valid valid key idx star salt equal to res. So our next one, let's grab it over here, was 188. Okay. 39 has e, and the answer is true. And then 92 has 9, and the answer is true. So we'll do. I forgot what it was. 34? 39 and 92. I'll just do one at a time. 39 has E, A, B, C. We probably don't need to pass the salt in since it's the same every time. Do this. Clean this up. Start with A, B, C. So 39, E, true. And then we had 92, shoot, I already forgot. The 92, 9, and also true. Let's see. Let's try it and see what happens. Oh, we're going to fail. Uh, we need to get rid of salt here. Okay, if we're getting some fails, that's fine. Um, in fact, we might be getting one true. Okay, so let's come here. Um, in fact, let me just double check. 39E, 92, 9. 39. Okay, good. So now we need to implement this. Let's go over here and we can say, um, so if it's a valid key, what do we need to do? We're going to say for i in range 1000, we're going to do if um, char times 5. I don't think I actually need that in the format string. I can just probably do char times 5 like that. In Cash MD5, in this case we are going to form a string, it's going to be salt and i, no it's not i, 
going to be id id x plus i and we actually plus one because we don't we want to start at the next one um so i think that looks pretty good i am getting an error oh we did that if that hits then we are going to return true and if we make it to the end of the loop we return false save that if we f5 was run and we are passing all our tests so we now have a way to check and see if a key is valid um Next thing I want to do is I'm going to make a function that's going to generate keys for me. Um, so let's do def uh, generate keys. I'm going to do this as an, I think I want to do this as a generate. And we'll, we'll go into what that means in a second. Um, I'll have it take in the salt because we need the salt. Um, and I will have it pass because that's going to be, because we're going to write tests. Um, so the test to see def test. Gener generate keys and we don't let's see so we're going to say like key generator is equal to aoc dot generate keys on abc and then we can say assert net key generator so uh is equal to and the first one we're going to the first one we get is 39 yep and then 92. So what happens here? Um, I'm going to write my function here so that it's a generator, which means, uh, or it means I call this and I get this generator, and then I can just loop over it. So I could also do like a for key in AOC that generate keys. Um, but here, so then when I call next, it's going to give me the first item, then it's going to give me the second item, etc. And I know the first key is 39, and the second one's 92, so I can test that way. If we run this right now, it's going to fail probably because none is not an iterator. So. Um, all right, so what are we going to do here? We need we need to we need an iterator. All that means is what we can do here is we can say we're going to start our counter at zero. That's where it said to start. We'll do a while true because we're just going to always run. Uh, we'll say hash is equal to hashed md5 of salt i. We get the hash, and then we can say if uh, triple I'm going to use the, this is cool, we'll use the walrus operator, equals get triple on hash. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to pass, we're going to pass hash into get triple, the result's going to get stored in triple, and if that's true, we're going to continue down here, and we can say, if is valid key, what do we need here, idx is i, the character is going to be triple, uh, the salt is going to be the salt, and I think we are done, so if that, then yield i. Okay, so what does this do? Basically, this function is going to be as a generator, and each time I call next, it's going to run up until the first yield and return get that value. So when I call yield, that's going to be the first key. Then I call next on it again. I get the next key, etc. Um, hypothetically, there could be an end of iteration. I could throw a, throw an exception there to end iteration, but I'm not going to use that because we'll just generate keys forever. Um, if we f5 this right now, we are in a loop. Oh, because we don't increment i. I make this mistake every time I do a while through loop. Uh, i plus equals 1. And now if we run f5, boom, passing all the tests. So now we can generate keys. So this now this should actually be pretty easy. Let's go over here. Um, part 1, we have no need for parameterizing there for sure. Uh, we are just going to say, uh, let's get rid of all of it for this moment. Uh, we will just say, um, let's see, the test is going to be assert aoc.part1 on abc, we're going to pass it the salt, it's equal to, and we need that number that the answer is for this thing, 22728. We will run this. We will fail because none is not 2278, just like we want. We will come in here and we will actually do this. So puzzle input in this case is the salt. We'll call it salt. Uh, oh, we don't need parse. Let's look down here. We don't need parse. Uh, we are way overly complicated in this structure we have here, but we'll just stick with it for now. Um, so we have this. We'll call this salt. Uh, and so all we need to do is um, egen equals generate. Oops generate keys and then for blank in range 63 next key gen 
And then we can just do return next key gen. And in theory, this should work for us. Um, we are missing an argument salt. Do we need to pass a salt in here somewhere? Um, Let's see, where are we failing? Um, oh, I'm not passing it to generate keys, of course. Salt. And this might take a minute. Oh, actually, very quick. So that looks like we're working. Um, let's go over here and, oops, I mean that. Let's change you to current file on day 14. Hit F5 to get an answer. Let's see if it's right. Part two. Okay, this looks long. I'm gonna pause it and read and I'll get back to you in a second. Okay, um, the only difference this time is every time I, when I get want to get a hash, what I really wanna get is the hash and then that resulting hash hashed again 2016 times. So, the, so it'll actually be hashed 2017 times for the original string. Um, and so that's the only difference. And we got some new numbers to play with. So I guess we'll come back here and uh, I'm going to move this off my screen, actually. I'm going to move this on the other screen. It just occurs to me, just because you, might, you guys can trust me sometimes if I copy off of it. Um, okay, so now what we need to be able to do is we need to be able to come up here and say, um, let's try, we're going, to, we're going to mess with our cached MD5 a little bit. And we're going to say cached MD5 string hash. Um, so we know the thing is a, let's see, string hash, and we'll do like, Num. So if the string is a b c zero, I'm gonna put the num here just to keep my convention of um, always having the kind of output last. Now we know if we do zero times on that, that we get this. Uh, if we do a b c, I guess we're always doing a b c zero. So let's just let's just do a bunch of a b c zeros, and we'll just do um, num and hash. We can get rid of that. And if we do one time stretched, I guess is our one stretch, we'll get this. I'm just sort of grabbing um, the hashes it gives me here. So if I make this two, I'll do this. Um, and if our, I'll do one more, if our, if we're 2016, we're going to get this hash. So then we can test that we get this thing all the way to the end. So now what we want to do is we want to test cache MD5. We want to say this is num. We're going to do a cache on ABC0, comma, num. And we want that to be hash. We save this. Now this is going to break a lot of tests because we aren't we don't we don't even take this num. In fact, let's go fix that right now. Um, we can fix this by saying uh, stretch equals zero. So now every time we've called this function in the past, it's still going to work because that's what we've been doing. So now if we push F5 to pytest, uh, we should pass. We fail those three tests in the middle. Let's see. Um, Interesting, we actually passed this one correctly, but we failed the rest of them because we're getting um, the same hash over and over again, probably. Okay, let's go fix it. Um, so now what we can just do is we can say, let's make this hash equals return hash. And in the middle, we'll say for underscore in stretch hash equals uh, cached hash or oh, cache hash cache md5 of string so basically now we can just cache this over you know we hit the extra stretch and we go let's try to see what our tests look like whoa we're failing all over the place um i think of course it's not Range, stretch, F5. Still failing, but we're getting closer, I guess. Um, let's 
be nice to know which subdivision we were failing on. So this is our Are we failing up here? Where than me that these go up here and not the first I thought the first three would be the successful Let's see, how do I figure this out? Okay. Um E E C O. So that one's what's failing. We're getting back five seven. Oh, because I've got my numbers all wrong. Okay. Find the hash of that. Oh, okay, that's good. Let's do this. We're gonna put a break here and we're gonna run again. And this time I expect num to be zero. We will step over that. And this time I expect num to be one. Let's go in here. We have our hash, so our out, uh, we should be able to do hash here is five, five, seven. So that's where that matches what we wanted. Now we're gonna step over this. And now hash is still, but because I'm hashing string, let's try pushing hash there. Let's uh, even, let's rerun. We'll take away our breakpoint. That that's one where I'm sure I'm sure somebody watching this video was yelling at the screen the whole time because that was so obvious. Okay, we can now do this new hash. Um, I think the rest of this is gonna be pretty simple. Do we need to redo anything else? We don't have trip. Our triple doesn't change. Our our is valid key doesn't change. Although we may have to call something slightly different. Um, I think we're basically here. Um, that test part one took a second, so I'm gonna actually pi test. Well, I guess for the first time, let's do it. We'll we'll be fine with that. Um, we'll get rid of this. Part two is going to be very similar to part one. It's going to be assert AOC that part two on ABC equals, and what am I looking for here? What's my answer? Uh, that. And if I F5 this, let's look, this might run for a minute, so I might, oh, nope, let's see. I'm getting cocky about it running. Public input not found. Um, Two. I probably need to actually come look at what I have for part two here. Oh, I didn't even. We should also. So I've got part two now. Now we got to actually write. We actually got to write it. Um, so this will be salt. This will be gen key salt. Um, gen key now is going to take a stretch equals zero. And so then when we call this hash, we just need to pass stretch equals stretch in. That looks good. So we come down here, generate key salt, stretch equals 2016. That all looks otherwise the same. Um, let's come up here. So we pass stretch into cached MD5. Um, we're also gonna need to know that a here, anytime we call cached MD5, we're gonna need to know this. We're gonna need to be stretching. Stretch equals stretch. zero um, that looks pretty good let's have five and see what we get um, now this might nope still not gonna keep being, keep getting kind of excited here let's see um, puzzle input not found so anyway, where am I getting puzzle input did I just mess up my it's my test. F5. All right. This may take a minute. So I'll pause and see, let it run. Um, after after this, what I'm probably going to do if this works, well, so if this works, we're basically done, right? We just got to run the real solution. Um, you might even say, is it worth bothering to test our solution here before we actually, if we were racing, we would just say, let's go run the real thing. And then we can, uh, if it fails, come back and start doing some tests. Um, because we want to be... Uh, do diligent with our tests. We're going to run this test. Um, once it works once, I will probably put like the skip marker on these and only run them selectively if we make big changes or periodically. Um, but for now, fine. So I'll probably pause and let this finish. Okay, so it didn't, it failed. Um, it's getting the wrong number. Let's see, let's go back and take it. Like we should probably do some more, um, we should probably do some more tests. 
Let's come here. We're gonna we're gonna definitely let's see. Um, part one worked. We're definitely so we're definitely gonna mark that for um my test dot mark dot skip. So we skip that in the future. I'm also gonna skip this one for now because it did take a while and I wanna make we're gonna work on smaller stuff to get it working. Um cool. So let's see. We wanna let's write testing generate keys again. So if we do def test generate keys to key generator equals AOC that generate keys ABC comma 2016. Now we've got a new thing. We can assert next key generator is equal to. So what's the first key? Um, I'm, I'm looking over here on the other screen to see the first triple is there, has no matching thing. The second triple has a matching EE. So the first key is 10. Uh, and it says eventually, let's, let's see, do we get that right? We're passing there, so that's correct. Um, they don't give us a second key or anything. Uh, so well, I'm probably gonna, I don't know what could be wrong, because our first key is right. So we're generating keys correctly. Um, how do we know how to get to... I'm going to pause this and think about it, because I'm not exactly sure where to go, and I don't want to flounder for minutes at a time here. All right, I see it. So when we call is valid key, we need to pass a stretch in, and we don't. So we, can, we need to pass stretch equals stretch here, and I suspect this is going to fix it all for us. Um, well, it's actually a little surprising that first one that this works, but without any other ones to test on, we can't be sure for sure. Um, let's come here and we will delete that, uh, run this test again. I'm expecting this one to succeed. Um, I'm going to pause it and let it run because it took a couple minutes last time. Um, but uh, you can see we already skipped, we're already into it now. So hang on for a second. And we passed. So that worked. Um, let's come over here and I'm going to go ahead and just change it from PyTest current file we will give this a run um i'm gonna probably pause again because this, will, this might take a minute but uh we should if we're feeling good of ourselves get both parts one and part two here um i'll pick up the video after it runs for a minute um in fact actually i'm gonna real quick i'm gonna i'm gonna kill this and we're gonna do like time python day 14 like that so just so we can see how long it takes all right, we're back not too long at all here, 43 seconds. Let's go ahead and grab this. Um, I will grab the window and see if I can move it back onto the screen here. Uh, we will try to submit. I got the right answer. So um, it wasn't that complicated, but just like little things got us here and it kind of ran slow at the end, but less than a minute, so not, not too bad. So um, thanks for hanging out with me today. I will talk to you next time. Bye.